I would now like to present a speaker this evening, the Norfolk County Register of Deeds, Mr. William O'Donnell. Mr. O'Donnell's subject this evening will be the four presidents of the United States who were born in Norfolk County. And so, Mr. O'Donnell, uh, it's over to you. Jim, thank you very much, and uh, to all, uh, thank you for having me. Uh, my name's Bill O'Donnell. I uh, grew, up, grew up in Norwood, up the street. Uh, went to school at the Severian Brothers High School after you know, uh, going to Bald School in St. Catharines in Norwood, and then uh, left uh, to, to go to Georgetown University, where uh, I always had an interest in history, uh, but uh, studied American government and economics, and then uh, came back uh, for law school uh, at Boston College. And, one of the things uh, you know, uh, I, I like about my position as Register of Deeds, it sort of combines a lot of passions I have. I, I was an assistant district attorney here in Norfolk County, and, and then uh, best job I ever had, except at the first of the month when the mortgage was due, and uh, my boss uh, gave me great advice. He says, you've got a family, you might want to go out and, and uh, get, get in the private sector. So uh, in the private sector, I, I, I loved uh, being a lawyer. I loved uh, litigation. I, I loved everything about being a, an attorney. Uh, and this job combines both uh, because, yes, I'm here to talk a little bit about history, but I'm also uh, recognized that the Registry of Deeds kind of intersects history uh, with politics uh, that I learned uh, down in Washington, D.C. Uh, had the privilege of working for Joe Moakley for three years, Congressman Moakley, uh, but also being in the private sector and also being an attorney. So um, it, it's great to come here tonight because uh, I, I, I want to talk about the registry a little bit and then also talk about uh, some of the history that you can find in the records, including um, the four presidents of the United States that were born here in Norfolk County. Uh, sometimes when I start these lectures I, uh, or, or uh, speeches, uh, I, I mention uh, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not good at telling jokes or singing songs, but we have trivia and I say, who are the four presidents born in Norfolk County? Uh, but uh, the answers are right in front of you with these poster boards, so I won't get into that. And I'll get into it a little later, but yes, Norfolk County, I don't think there's another county um, in the United States, uh, possibly uh, in Virginia, uh, that, that can say that three presidents were born uh, here in Norfolk County. It was John Adams, John Quincy Adams. Uh, a lot of people get uh, John Kennedy, uh, even though sometimes they don't realize Brookline's part of Norfolk County, uh, mm -hmm. the way the history went there, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and people say, well, Brookline's separate from the county. But you have to realize, back in 1793, when Norfolk County started, uh, uh, South Boston, Dorchester, Roxbury, Hyde Park, Reedville were all part of Norfolk County. So Brookline was actually, you know, it, you know, it was all contiguous. Some of those areas got annexed into Boston, but Brookline uh, chose to stay uh, as part of Norfolk County. Uh, so uh, that's another piece of trivia is, is how did Brookline get separate, and, and, uh, and that's why. Uh, and the fourth president of the United States that was born in Norfolk County is George Herbert Walker Bush. And a lot of people, that's usually the one that stumps <coughs> people, um, and, and we'll get into that in a little bit. Uh, I want to thank Lauren Vittar for in inviting me uh, here and, and making all the arrangements. Um, you know, I, when uh, I, I said to Lauren, as I said to you, I, I don't tell great jokes. I, I don't, uh, uh, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not good singing. And, uh, you know, uh, why do you want me to speak? And she said she was desperate for a speaker. So that's why uh, you got stuck with me tonight. Um, but. Um, it's great to talk a little bit about history, but I do want to just touch upon the Registry of Deeds uh, on the here and now. And, and you may find the information useful, but you may have uh, relatives or people uh, that you can uh, bring the information back. Uh, first of all, um, you know, we have this green folder that, that was handed out, and it does have a lot of great information. I'm not going to get into, into all of it, but when you think about it, the Registry of Deeds, yes, we're here to talk about history, but the biggest asset most of us have are our homes, and that's what the <coughs> Registry of Deeds is about. So there's information uh, in this green folder about the homestead. And again, a lot of this is on our website too. Uh, you know, when I started as a register, uh, and, and uh, time goes by, I, I, I became registered in 2002. Uh, whether you realize it or not, they didn't even have uh, email there. 
you know, and the internet was just starting. So all these changes that have taken place in 20 years, just in your life, you can kind of envision it and all the technology. But um, I, can, I can say, go to our website, www.norfolkdeeds.org. But uh, that wasn't the case, uh, you know, back in, in, in 2002 as, as things were moving forward. So our website is a, a source of information, and we do it the old-fashioned way. We still, um, you know, uh, put it in, 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 in the folder for people to read. And that's sort of the approach I've taken to the registry, uh, not to digress. We, we've been at the cutting edge. Uh, we have implemented so many modernization initiatives. I mentioned the website, but I'm very proud of, uh, and again, there's no I in team, my staff, I've got a great staff um, that helped in this endeavor. Very proud that we implemented internet land record research. Uh, again, something that really wasn't around in 2002, but as, as we went forward with the internet and saw what it was about, and it, 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 it didn't happen overnight. Because, uh, as I mentioned, uh, Norfolk County goes back to 1793. All those records are online. So if you want to do research, and we'll talk about that in a little bit, uh, you can go to the website, www.norfolkdeeds.org, and, and look, it all, look it all up. It's available on the internet. And uh, you're going to see by some of the handouts, some of the older records are handwritten. But we've, we've transcribed those documents. So you can hit one button to get the legal document, which is the handwritten document. And you can hit another button to get the transcribed version. And I think that's not just important for the lawyers. You know, the lawyers love it. But more and more, we're seeing people that are doing historical and genealogical research and looking up information on who, who was at their home or, or the history of their home. Uh, I think that's a good resource uh, for, you know, for people to have. Um, and when I say uh, I'm very proud of other modernization initiatives, uh, whether it's electronic recording, uh, getting all those documents online, when I first got to the registry, I asked, well, how do you back all this up? What's the disaster recovery? And the person pulled out the thing on the desk and said, it's all there. It's all backed up now. Everyone, you know, the records to your home, and let's face it, I, I, I mentioned it, the biggest asset most of us have in our homes, those records are backed up. Uh, they're not only backed up by microfilm, which you might say, well, it's an old-fashioned way of doing things, but by law, we have to do it. It's in the statute. We have to microfilm. But think about it. Um, down in New Orleans, and they're talking about a hurricane coming to Florida, but think about back in New Orleans. A flood came in, and they wiped out a lot of the uh, repositories for records, and they were all wiped out. But at least we have, you know, here in Norfolk County, we'd have, you know, it's on microfilm. That's kind of old-fashioned, but every day, we do a tape drive backup that gets uh, sent to a renovated uh, nuclear bunker uh, owned by Iron Mountain. So some of our, our records are in Iron Mountain in New York, in Massachusetts, and down in Rhode Island. So we've taken steps to run it like a business. As I said, I was in the private sector. But, uh, and be modern about it. Um, you know, the modernization initiatives that have taken place here in Norfolk County have made Norfolk Registry Deeds uh, uh, one of the best. I think the attorneys will tell you that. Attorneys have written. Uh, how Norfolk County is one of the best, but I still try to do it the old-fashioned way. We're still one of the few registries that print books, um, and, and uh, people say, "Well, that's so old-fashioned." Well, you know, if the computers go down and we have backups, you know, people still know how to do it the old-fashioned way. We print the index, we print the books, and a lot of times people come in to do the research the old-fashioned way. And to give you a, a, a sense. Um, we're, we're over book 40,000. There, there's 40,000 books. That's just on the recorded land side of the Registry of Deeds. Another avenue of research is the land court, which started in Norfolk County in 1900, and there's over 1.5 million documents on that side. So there's a lot of information, a lot of history that's available. Um, so uh, just a couple of consumer issues before we get into you know, some, of the, some of the history that's there. Um, homestead. Um, if you own a, a, a home uh, and you're lucky enough to own a home, you should consider getting a homestead. It's in the state legislature um, in Chapter 188 that people who own a piece of property as their principal residence can take steps to protect the property against a forced sale. Yes, if you don't pay the town of Foxborough your taxes, they can, they can take the property by tax title. If you don't pay your lender, they can foreclose on you. But there's other situations people get themselves in. They could have a bad car accident where they thought they had a lot of insurance, but they only had $20,000 worth of insurance on their car, and they have a $100,000 case 
because they hurt somebody and they're liable. <coughs> well, the homestead puts a picket fence around the house. They're still going to chase you, but they can't force the sale of your home. And I think it's very important to, uh, it's again, on the website, it's in the green folder that's there. And um, again, uh, if you're elderly, uh, there's certain protections for the elderly that are there. There are certain protections that are written in by the state legislature. Why would they write them in unless they want people to take advantage of it? For, for instance, if you have a homestead recorded at the registry and uh, you, you, your house burnt down and you got a check, an insurance check to rebuild, you're protected for two years so that the insurance proceeds are protected so your creditors cannot come in and swoop in and go after the money. If you go to sell your house, again, the proceeds of the sale are protected for one year if you have a homestead recorded. So there's a, you know, <coughs> I mentioned I was an attorney. You talk to attorneys, I know we have a bad name, but uh, um, if you talk to 10 different attorneys, I would say 9.9 .9 out of 10 would tell people to have a homestead. And if you have younger folks, if you're lucky enough at 18 to own a house, you have a right to put a homestead on. So even though the legislature has written in extra protections for elderly, I tell everyone, if, uh, if you're young, uh, middle-aged, elderly, you should really get a homestead. So that's one consumer issue just to pass on um, for the here and now as opposed to the history we're about to talk. Um, many of you had to borrow money. I know I did. I have three children, so you know you got uh, obligations. My daughter just got married. You got you know you're trying to get through college. We borrow money. Well, when you borrow money, a mortgage gets recorded at, at the registry uh, when you borrow that money, and that's to make sure that the bank and, and you have a lot of good, uh, great um, community banks here in Foxborough. Um, they they want to get paid, and sometimes uh, we have to refinance. Uh, you know, when rates were two and a half, you refinance. My goodness, I heard it's over 7% uh, now. Um, so when you refinance, your old mortgage was paid off. Or maybe you were lucky enough to have your mortgage paid off. Uh, and I, 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 I'm jealous and I congratulate you. But you want to make sure the mortgage discharge uh, gets recorded at the registry. And what's a mortgage discharge? It's a one or two page document that tells the world that the mortgage has been paid off. And the reason why I mention it is, and things have gotten better. Uh, the Attorney General, uh, there was litigation against, more against the bigger banks who were kind of lax in making sure people's mortgage discharges uh, got you know, sent to the registry. Other times, um, it might have been sent to you and it just wasn't made clear. You have to take that to the registry to get recorded. Now, uh, again, I'm a big believer in community banking. There's a, you know, I'm from Norwood. Uh, Norwood Bank, a great community bank, a lot of great community banks all around <coughs> Norfolk County. Um, if you have an issue and you need a mortgage discharge, you go to the, your local bank and say, hey, I paid off that mortgage and I'm trying to sell my house uh, or I'm trying to refinance and the closing attorney is saying, I need a mortgage discharge. I know I paid it off. They're great. You'll go in, they'll look it up, they'll get you a mortgage discharge and you just got to get it to the registry. The thing is, a lot of times uh, back when, you know, you know, a while ago, you might have borrowed money from these bigger banks, and they're less consumer friendly, in my opinion. Um, sometimes those banks assign your mortgage a couple of times, and believe it or not, in Massachusetts, there's no law that requires an assignment to be recorded at the registry so consumers can know who holds their mortgage. And the reason I mention it is um, if you're chasing a mortgage, it, sometimes it's hard to chase that paper. Local bank, Community bank, easier, but some of the bigger banks, no. And the only reason I say that is every time I, I do a talk, someone grabs me afterwards and says, you know, I could tell people were glazing over when you were talking <laughs> about that mortgage discharge. But I went through that, and that I wish someone had told me about getting on uh, the mortgage discharge getting recorded because they had a tough time tracking it down. So again, we have information on it, and I just mentioned it because we all have to borrow money. It's just when that mortgage gets paid off or you refinance, which means the old mortgage got paid off, make sure the mortgage discharge is recorded. Another consumer issue, before I get into the history, consumer notification service. FBI says the fastest growing um, white collar crime <coughs> is property fraud, mortgage fraud. Now, 
we, we have a program, and we did this before you. Here, the TV title lock and all this. We, we did this a while ago as, as, as a uh, service. And again, it's a reflection of us trying to be a modern operation <coughs> with the technological abilities and information technology services. Our consumer notification service, you can sign up online. What is the consumer notification service? Um, you sign up. I've signed up myself. And I get emails. If My name is William Patrick O'Donnell, but I get a notice of any William O'Donnell document that gets recorded at that registry. Now, I get the, and, and, and again, if you're not good on the computer, we have a customer service uh, center, and their number is 781-461-6101. You can call them and get some help. But I'll get an email, and it, it, I will look it up. And it may be William J. O'Donnell, has nothing to do with me, fine. Could be William T. O'Donnell, but it, it sends me these notices. But there will be a time, hopefully never, but it could, where I'm going to look at that document and say, wait a minute, that's the deed to my house. I did not sign that. Or that's a mortgage on my property, but I didn't sign that. And again, I want to be clear. The Consumer Notification Service at the Registry of Deeds does not prevent the crime. But we do have uh, links we do have uh, <coughs> that we can give you to the uh, law enforcement agencies that you can get in touch. And you may want to get in touch with an attorney if you're, you're in that situation. Because obviously, you haven't prevented the fraud, but you want to get on, on that right away. And why did we do it? Well, we did it because you know, my parents, um, you know, my dad was uh, climbed poles for the Boston Edison for uh, 38 years. He, he was from Brighton. My, my uh, mom was from uh, Rosendale. You know, when, when they bought the house in Norwood in 1959, you think they were looking at their records, or, or certainly homesteads were available back then. They didn't have a homestead on it because no one conveyed this information to people. Um, you were lucky to get that information, but now with the internet and things like that, people are more attuned to ways they can protect themselves. But the reason why I mention my parents is they weren't watching the records. You know, you bought the house and then, you know, if you were lucky enough to live in it, you know, for 40 years and sell it, you, you went back to the registry with the deed and you sold it. But there are, are, are predators out there and you, and that's the society we live in. So we came up with, the, we, we did this consumer notification service so people could get notified if there was any activity that involved their name. Now. We did that a while ago. Now suddenly you have title lock, all that. Well, in not for accounting, it's free. So you just sign up and, 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 and you can do it. So that's another, uh, again, I know I'm here to talk history, but you know sometimes it's good to have the information of the here and now. Um, and, and I think, uh, you know, again, uh, that's the FBI talking. Uh, and certainly I think it's gotten worse as far as, and, and we you know, all hear about it, uh, cyber security, breaches, scams. And believe me, uh, real estate is a big tie into that. Uh, as far as history, and, and you're all, you know, you're members of the, the Foxborough Historical Society, so history is probably a passion for you as it is for me. Um, I think it's important that these records, and again, we have a modern registry that goes back to 1793. All those records are available, and I think it's important to realize that for for people who are interested in history. You can go back uh, on these records. You can, you can look up these records. So um, the Modernization Initiative has opened the doors for historical research. And one of the other things I was very proud of, uh, it was great to get all these documents on. Oh, and the other thing is, sometimes uh, when we first started, we would just scan the images in. But now it's integrated. So what does that mean? Well, if you run a name, you know, if you run your name, every record back to, you know, to 1793 comes up. So if you run John Adams's name, it's integrated. The rec all, it will populate, if you do the research, um, all the records in John Adams's name. And you know, um, again, um, you know, we have information, and it's in the book. Uh, there's a book we did. We did two books. Uh, and one, this was for the 225th anniversary of Norfolk County, which started in 1793. And it does have information about the, about the four presidents. Um, but I, I think it's just great reading, reading, the, reading the records. Uh, and one of the other projects, uh, so we're, we're very proud that we're back to 1793 and all those documents. 
over 45 million images are available to you by just going online. Um, it's integrated, so our index is integrated to the document. So if you run John Adams, all the records of John Adams back to 1793 come up. Uh, so it's an integrated name index with the documents. And the other thing, um, you know, uh, I'm the 11th register. From 1793 to 1900, uh, someone with the best penmanship was the was the uh, person that wrote the documents. They didn't have copy machines, so someone would come in and, and actually, um, I, sometimes I'm all over the place on these things, but book one, page one, if you look it up, it's a document from Foxborough, the first document. Now, uh, like Dawn's on marble head here when I'm talking to Foxborough. Uh, uh, the first document ever recorded in Norfolk County's history was a document from Foxborough. So um, we're very proud that you can do that. You can, you can integrated index, you can look up this information, but back uh, in 1793 when that document got uh, uh, written in by horseback or whatever, um, there was uh, probably someone with the best penmanship would transcribe the document. So the original document would come in and they would write it in the book. <coughs> well, the documents from 1793 to 1900 were all handwritten. So, um, you know, which, and those are the legal documents. But we undertook a, pro uh, a project, um, it finished a few years ago. So from 1793 to 1900, there was over 450,000 documents in that range. Every one of those documents got transcribed. We started with the deeds because we felt, felt, you know, I'm, I'm a history person, I think most people would be interested in the deeds. But then we extended it to every document that got recorded from 1793 to 1900. You can now uh, look up uh, as transcribed, and uh, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm just, I don't want to be like the teacher in school or anything like that. Actually, I'll hand a few more up. Uh, yeah, I'll get some, get some more. Um, and, and again, maybe I'm doing it because, uh, you know, you, know um, you people probably know more about the Adamses than I do, but the reason I'm, I'm showing this is, is, is to show you, um, yeah, just wow. so, uh, and some of these, are, this, is, this particular one um, is not in the folder, but we do have other references in the folder. But the reason I point it out is there's handwritten uh, documents uh, or transcribed, and uh, you'll see it for two pages, and then you'll see the written one. It, this is the same exact document. Um, and the reason why I mentioned this one, uh, this one was actually um, John Adams, uh, you know, who, who again was the President of the United States. Um, he he um, donated this land um, to the town of Quincy, which, which is the big city now, you know, but it was the town of Quincy. And, and again, some of the writings, uh, if, you, if you go, um, you know, to the third line, I feel for the residents of my ancestors. Um, on the fourth line, I be of the inhabitants with whom I have so happily lived for more than 86 years and of my sincere desire to promote their happiness and the instruction of their prosperity in religion, morality, and all useful unto in sciences. And just some of the, the language that gets uh, written into these documents. Um, f further down, uh, and, and it's, it's interesting, he says, uh, uh, almost towards the end. And, and next, after the completion of said temple, he was donating this land so a church could be built, that all the future rents, profits, and emoluments arising from said land be applied to the support of a school for the teaching of the Greek and Latin languages and any other languages, arts, and science, which a majority of the ministers, magistrates, lawyers, and physicians inhabiting in said town may advise. And the reason why I mention that is there's another uh, donation of, of land that John Adams did to the town of Quincy, and he did it in honor of his friend John Hancock. Now, John Hancock was the first governor of Massachusetts. He was the president of the Continental Congress. And in that document, uh, John Adams, who, who's the second president of the United States, writes about John Hancock and how what a great patriot he was and all the things he did. And it's funny, he also mentions um, even more strongly that he thinks everyone should take Latin and Greek. Maybe he'd be <laughs> disappointed on how things are now, but I, I was always amazed about John Adams because 
um, uh, David McCulloch and, and um, I, you know, I've, I, David McCulloch, I've always uh, enjoyed um, his books. Uh, I, I, I've met him. And as a matter of fact, on the back, that we, there's a green book. This is another um, history book we did, volume two. This was done when the building was rededicated in 2019. Uh, and we, we did a rededication. But on the, on the back page, um, and I, I was very proud. I, David McCulloch actually wrote me a letter where he, he mentions, I was fascinated and delighted to learn about the way the Norfolk County Registry of Deeds and the Xerox Corporation are tra transcribing the historical deeds into easy to read computer text. And I say this as one who has spent a great deal of my working life struggling to read original letters and diaries and other old documents. You are making an important contribution and I send my warmest congratulations. David McCulloch, American historian and author, who recently passed away. But what I was amazed, you know, maybe, um, maybe John Adams got it wrong with Latin and Greek, but um, he predicted, uh, although he said it was going to be on July 2nd, uh, uh, everyone would be celebrating the independence, and he said with pomp and circumstance and parades and bonfires and fireworks. And I'm like, how does someone predict that? And look, look where, you know, when July 4th, all you have to be. You, uh, uh, is around here and, and say that. How does someone have the vision um, to, 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 to see that? And um, John Adams had, had written that in, in his diary. So, uh, and, and certainly, uh, and, and you can read about what, what he does, um, and, it's in both, and it's certainly in the books, and also in the green sheet, we brought, brought some handouts uh, on, on some of the presidents and, and what they did. Um, and I know I digress, but the, but the transcription is what David McCulloch was talking about. And those transcribed <coughs> documents, one of the reasons I did it was history can't possibly come alive if you can't read the document. And I, I, if you look at that, I mean, you can read it. it it's, tough, it's a tough slog, as they say. And um, I, went to, I mentioned earlier I went to St. Catherine, so we at least uh, got drilled on cursive. <laughs> I'm not so sure society, a lot of people, especially the younger generation, knows cursive. Uh, and so what I'm saying is that may be a foreign, this, this language may be a foreign language because no one knows how to read cursive or, or it's going a, a different way. So for history to be preserved and for history to come alive, there were a lot of reasons we wanted to transcribe these documents. And again, um, it, it, it does tie in to the presidents in front of you, but especially that era from 1793 to 1900, because there's so much information. Um, there, there is a deed, for instance, how many counties have a deed? A deed from the second president of the United States to the sixth president of the United States. There's a deed recorded at the Registry of Deeds from John Adams to John Quincy Adams, and John Quincy Adams was, was uh, John Adams' son. But how many other counties can say they, they, they have a deed from, from certainly one president to another president, never mind one president who is related to the, to the other president uh, and, and is, is his son. Um, but the reason why I, I keep going about the transcription, I think we see more and more of it, uh, people doing historical and genealogical research. And it, there's just so much information. In fact, you can just find, uh, regular deeds, and, and I go through it, and sometimes they listed everything in that house in 1800. You know, it wasn't just, you know, a, for $2,000 or for good and sufficient consideration. They listed everything in a house, so it was kind of, you know, to see what got listed in a house in 1800 gives you a sense of hi history, a sense of information, um, and, and also, uh, I, I also chuckled because um, there was a deed between two brothers and it's amazing the descriptions, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, you know, farmer, this, that. But um, the the brother was taking over. Uh, one brother must have had problems and was deeding it over to to his brother. And it, it said, uh, you know, the brother that was getting it was, you know, successful entre, you know, successful businessman and all that. And then of course the other brother would be like. Bill O'Donnell, it said, insolvent debtor, you know? So sometimes they, <laughs> some of the old language they used um, had a story behind, behind the documents. But um, for people like yourself that are interested in history, you know, um, some of those documents, as I say, give you a sense of, 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 of what was in a house. 
Um, I know um, people have done it. Um, uh, you know, I, I was talking to Jim earlier. You, you mentioned homes. I know um, in, in Norwood uh, there's a very vibrant historical society, and they're doing a lot of work um, uh, refurbishing an old cemetery. And, and the records are there. Um, the records are there. They, 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 they use the registry to, 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 to see you know, these names that are on these, uh, these cemetery stones to try to get a sense of history. Uh, people try to do a, a, you know, a sense of history of their home. And you don't have to be an attorney to use the records. As a matter of fact, um, in, in that green uh, folder, um, you know, and again, there's a lot of information in there, but also in there uh, is, is a section on, um, you know, on how to do research. Uh, it, it, again, um, you know, uh, we, used to, you know, we had seminars at the registry where things are starting to get better with, the, with, with COVID. So, but, but here's a handout. It says Norfolk Deeds Computer Assisted Research Guide. We would hand those out at the seminars we would have at the registry. We'd go <coughs> and teach people how to do research. And, and a lot of times people said, hey, we, we took that sheet of paper home and it really helped us, you know, uh, we'd get feedback. So if you, if you say there's no way I could do the research, uh, you can you know, and, and this, this will help you, uh, this sheet, which is in the, in, on the green, right side of your green folder, um, it's called Norfolk Deeds Computer Assisted Research Guide, uh, it, it can allow you. And also, um, you know, some of the things we talked about, um, you know, uh, there's the Homestead Act, we talked about that earlier, but here are the forms. So, uh, you know, if you, if you decide that you wanna do a homestead, we actually printed the forms, um, and, or you could go on our website and, and, and and download the forms. And one of the reasons why I mentioned that, uh, that is scams. <laughs> there was a scam where um, people were soliciting, telling people they would get you a, um, a homestead form for $10. And people, you know, a lot of it was targeting the elderly, and people would write a check for $10 to get a form. Don't pay $10 for a form that you can, you know, take home with you free, or if you know anyone, they can get it free, or, you know, go to an attorney's office. I mean, Imagine paying ten dollars and you just get a blank form, you know. So, you know, people do it. It's it's unfortunate, um, but but you know, people are, are, are like that. Um, as far as the history, uh, uh, again, uh, I, I think uh, the two presidents, John Adams. I mean, you know, uh, there's information in the blue book. Um, there's there's uh, information in the green book about him, but some of the um, principles uh, that were incorporated uh, uh, in the Declaration of Independence and the U.S. Constitution really had its roots in, in John Adams uh, being the intellect that he was. And uh, he was also uh, the, the drafter of the Massachusetts Constitution. And people don't realize the Massachusetts, Massachusetts Constitution, actually the Declaration of Rights in Massachusetts predates um, the U.S. Constitution. So a lot of times, uh, Again, the, the lawyer in me uh, who enjoys history, a lot of times something might uh, pass muster um, under the U.S. Constitution, but the Massachusetts Declaration of Rights, actually uh, you have more rights, and, 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 and it gets interpret interpreted a little differently sometimes. Again, that can go back uh, to John Adams. Uh, John Quincy Adams, uh, you know, um, uh, you know, uh, was, was interesting in, in of its own right because, um, and who knows, it almost looked like things could, could, be, could have gone that way the last election or, or whatnot, not to get, get into that, but he got elected in the U.S. House of Representatives because the Electoral College didn't come up with a majority. So, I mean, you know, that doesn't happen all the time. And, and, and you know, we learned, can learn from history. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, he cut a deal, you know, like any <laughs> politics, you know, you know uh, politics being what it is, you know. Um, but he, but, but he, he prevailed. So um, the, the, there was no majority of the Electoral College. And, and I think that was uh, kind of a unique, uh, unique way of get, getting, uh, getting elected. Um, the interesting thing I would say about John Adams is, he got defeated uh, in a close election, even though the Federalists were kind of fighting amongst each other, you know. Uh, um, uh, he got defeated by Thomas Jefferson. And later in life, uh, Jefferson and Adams, although sort of political rivals, uh, would write to each other and wrote to each other. In fact, 
um, the, the, the story is when, Ad, um, when John uh, Adams died, he said, Jefferson lives, Thomas Jefferson lives. <coughs> Not realizing that jo Thomas Jefferson had died a few hours before at, at Monticello. Wow. And guess what day did they die on? July 4th. July 4th. So, uh, you know, and, and, but I guess I say, you know, here are political rivals, and, and again, I mentioned I worked for Congressman Moakley. Those were the, the days of uh, Tip O'Neill um, was, was the Speaker of the House, and I had the privilege of working for, and, 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 you know, working with Joe Moakley and Tip O'Neill, and Ronald Reagan was the President, but they got things done, you know, and that's what they need to do uh, now. Like, the, the days of, you know, you know, yeah, they battled, but they got things done for the good of the country, and that's what needs to be done. And I was always struck that John Adams and, and Thomas Jefferson, they have these letters back and forth. In fact, you know, you know uh, David McCulloch's books use some of, some of what was written. Um, and I was always struck that as bitter rivals as they were, and I mean, it couldn't have been too easy for John Adams who, you know, to, to lose to Thomas Jefferson, yet keep, you know, you know, you know, put the politics besides and have a, a relationship and write to each other, uh, and, and that 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 went on to to the end. So uh, clearly, uh, there there are stories behind both John Adams and John Quincy Adams that that, that, that kind of resonate today. Um, again, I was very young when John Kennedy was president, but. Uh, uh, you know, uh, I, I, I know uh, my, my wife's family's from Brookline, and uh, uh, again, John Kennedy meant a lot. I know uh, my grandmother came over here as an immigrant in uh, 1923 from Ireland, and I know that was a big thing. Uh, Catholic president, you know, uh, Irish Catholic president. Uh, and, and um, you know, the houses, when they say, there was a picture of John Kennedy, I remember that growing up as well uh, at the house. And George Herbert Walker book, Bush, uh, they had a dedication uh, for him. Um, and, and as a matter of fact, uh, uh, this is a picture from the dedication. And, and um, I don't know, I, I, I had a, another position then, and I was asked to say a few words. I was the chairman of the Norfolk County Commission. So that's a young me there. Um, but I'll tell you what, I felt bad. I, I hate to say it, I'm a Democrat. I voted against uh, George Herbert Walker Bush. <laughs> but one of the nicest gentlemen I, I've ever met. I, I actually felt bad I voted against him. But where did I go to school? <laughs> Georgetown University. So <laughs> the guy that was running against him went to Georgetown University. So I, <laughs> you know, so all, all the things. But um, I, I'll tell you, that, that was something. Um, they had the dedication. He was born in Milton, and they dedicated uh, a plaque there where he was born. And there had to be 1,500 people there, and the energy uh, that was there. and. Uh, a, a true gentleman, and again, um, I, I always think back. You know, uh, he lost. Uh, uh, read my lips. No new taxes, but he raised taxes. But he actually set set up the economy so it was better, so that you know President Clinton, you know, could balance the budget. So in in some ways, um, you know, he took an action that that probably hurt him politically. But he but in in the end, you know. Uh, uh, there was balanced budgets back in the 90s, you know, so uh, again, a lot in this history, um, I don't mean to tie it to the, to the modern era, but I think if we don't learn from history, uh, the, 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 the history is not going to go too well uh, for any of us. Um, but uh, with that, uh, I, I hope, I, I, I really wanted today to, to really bring the registry, uh, in, I, I, I pride that our internet through a modern way brings the registry records into, into people's homes and businesses through the internet. Um, I wanted to bring what the registry does and some of the consumer issues like that homestead, like the mortgage discharge, like consumer notification. You know, bring it out uh, and, 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 and if you could uh, spread the word to, to people that may need it. You know, you may have a, a niece or a son or a daughter, you know, they're, they're, they're busy working or, or, or you know, they're running the, the children to, to sporting events, and sometimes the, the information they may need to protect their home or to, to make things a little better for them, um, they're just not aware of, and if you could just uh, you know, pass that information on. And I also hope that, that uh, again, uh, the, the information that, that we have on these boards, um, and, and you can see we, we picked uh, these two boards up for the town of um, uh, Foxborough, you know, in each of the books we did, the one for the 225th anniversary, uh, 
And again, uh, John Hancock was the, the person, the first governor uh, that signed the legislation. First governor of Massachusetts, he signed the legislation creating Norfolk County in 1793. But we, we tried to, to, you know, to pick some people. Uh, you know, for instance, Foxborough. Um, we have a, a little story about Seth and Uriah Boyd, which, you know, here we are, right, the Boyd Library. Yeah. Um, uh, is, uh, in, in Franklin, uh, there was the Horace Mann abolitionist and edu education reformer, and we tied it to a deed that they had. So there's some interesting stories in the books, uh, and, and that's the two pictures there. Uh, one was in the 225th anniversary, and the other was in the building dedication in 2019. Um, we, we renovated the registry of deeds. Uh, it, it, it has been uh, uh, actually four locations of, of, of books uh, at the registry. The registries are always located in Dedham. Um, but I always tell the story, I have three children, you never, you, you're always taking care of your children. The first uh, register, he was a war hero, uh, Captain Elephant Pond, uh, and, and he was the first register from 1793. Um, well, from 1793 to 1796, uh, know where he kept it, the, the registry books? His basement. His dad's house. <laughs> His dad's house. So you're, you're always taking care of your kids. So they kept it there until the first courthouse got built. And, uh, and then um, this building, uh, this is an old kind of picture. This is the current registry. It's across from uh, the Gold Dome Superior Court. This started construction in 1903, was opened in 1905, and we did a renovation in 2019. So in these books, there's, uh, you know, for instance, in Rentham, Ann Sullivan, uh, there was a, a story about her, an educator. Um, you know, uh, and we did, you know, there was some history. Uh, we also did, like, Allie Raisman uh, lived in Needham. So we, we tried to tie, we tied some of it to history. Uh, we tied some of it, um, uh, you know, to, to sports and, and education. Uh, so, um, you know, for instance, in Millis, uh, Christian Herta. He was the governor of Massachusetts, but he was also the United States Secretary of State. So there's some interesting stories, and two of the stories uh, we have um, uh, about Foxborough here, uh, but the, the, also the information uh, from the presidents. There is a, a version of, 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 of that in, in the blue book here, and then also a handout in, in the green book with some of the actual deed references. So if you want to look up uh, the deed in Brookline, you know, Joe, Joe Kennedy's name, uh, the president's father, it's, it's, it's right there. You can look up this information. And as I said, I'm always intrigued. Um, you know, I'm always intrigued by, you know, John Adams uh, deeding property to his son. And, uh, you know, that was in 1803 in Book 21 at the registry, uh, page 32. So uh, some great history. Um, and, and again, I think we're lucky to have had four presidents uh, here in Norfolk County. And uh, again, I Thank you for having me. I, I hope I brought you a little bit about what the registry is about uh, and just a little about uh, the little history that we have here in Norfolk County, and I, I really appreciate it. Yes? Uh, I would like to say I had a personal experience with the uh, registry. Uh, you had spoken at the uh, Foxborough Senior Center a number of years ago, and uh, you said uh, that if anybody wanted to look up their deed, they could your workers were there and, and we could do that. So I thought, well, okay, I'll do that. So uh, in their research, there, there was quite a thing that was discovered. Somebody had stolen some money from basically a forgery, my signature and all, and they uh, took money from my, uh, the value of my house. And, uh, and, and, and your people were able to find that for me. Well, and otherwise I never would have known. So I followed up and it was during the time when all the banks were being changed from one bank to another to another and it wound up with uh, uh, the bank that's in the center of town. And uh, anyway, I, I went to the police chief about it and uh, he was amazed uh, at what somebody did. They actually forged my signature and uh, they had a notary sign it and so there was a notary involved. And so anyway, it got wiped off eventually, and uh, I don't owe any money that they borrowed from, from my house. Well, I'm sorry you had to go through the travails, but uh, I, 
Again, when I mention no I in team, I, 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 I really do believe we have not only the best registry, we have the best registry because we have the best staff, but to hear a story like that, that they helped you, uh, that, that, that makes it all worthwhile. When, when you know, we, we preach customer service, and, and, and Noel DeBoner from my office is here today. We have the computer here today where if anyone has any questions or needs a copy of the deed, they can do. what happened. And yeah. I, and, you know, my, my children, they wouldn't have known. Uh, maybe, you know, I did uh, do some borrowing or something on that. They wouldn't have known. And, uh, but the, the point is, it was notarized and it was uh, forgery that was really right. allowed in that and, and the good, the, you know, and, and again, this is one of the, you know, this is a testimonial sort of to what we talked about a little earlier that could so the reasons why maybe someone might want to sign up for the consumer notification service yeah. you know you happen to find it because the staff was looking through it right. but you know in real time if someone did that a notice could come in and you'd say wait something's not right here and and so you kind of put the face on what I was talking about because yeah. sometimes people are like that's not going to happen I mean I, you know honestly um, to hear your story uh, yeah. it, it, it's sad I'm sorry you went through it but it just shows you what's out there. And, and the good news is, to not to, you know, I, 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 I don't want to panic people, that if someone like forged and then deeded the house out, uh, that, 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 you know, by definition is a forgery and cannot convey good title. But it creates a lot of problems and a lot of headaches that you got to go through. Um, but I don't want people, you know, uh, it's just you want to be aware of it because um, to me, um, you know, it, 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 you know, having something that could affect my credit or possibly, as you say, a forgery where, you know, someone might deed out my house, even though I have rights and I can fight that, it, it's just an aggravation that you don't want to go through. Well, but I think it's the time. Of money. That's what was uh, Well, they, they, they have a, the house per se. It was a sum of money that they borrowed from, from my house. And, you know, part of my, that's what I said, that I may get an email and say, wait a minute. That's a mortgage on my property, but I did not sign that. Yeah. And then yeah. here you, you, you <laughs> we should go. <laughs> I, I need you to come to all my, my talks. Um, and as far as uh, what you mentioned about the banks and they all changed the names, in that green folder, and I, I, I know I keep referencing it, there's a lot of information, but one of the documents is where has my bank gone? Uh, this gives you a state and local um, contact information websites. Because, you know, people forget in the 1990s, some banks went out of business, but a lot of banks have merged, and, and that was the story I was saying when people were trying to track down and get a mortgage discharge. They're like, where has my bank gone? So this document, where has my bank gone, um, gives consumers like you a, a, a resources to try to track down who's holding, uh, you know, I, my, I borrowed money from XYZ Bank. Um, who, who, where is my bank on? Where, where did that, who's holding yeah. my note? So uh, again, you mentioned, I, I heard you mention that when you were saying it, and I think it's important to reiterate that one of the documents in here, if you ever find yourself trying to track down things, um, this is a good uh, document. Where has my bank got to kind of uh, track down uh, things? Yes. Uh, thank you so much for making these documents accessible to the general public and readable. That is a fantastic public service that many people can enjoy. As an aside, I just wanted to thank you for bringing up John Adams and Thomas Jefferson with their, even though they might have been political opponents, that they, they reconciled and they had a friendship and you know it shows again Tip O'Neill and President Reagan. Yeah, that's what we need today and in the future. So just as an aside, the other question I had is the, the your computer assisted research guide. What is really important today? It's like the second largest hobby is genealogy. Gardening <coughs> is the first one. Now with <laughs> genealogy, I, I'm wondering if there's a type of research or or information that can be put together maybe by the the Registry of Deed and maybe by the New England Genealogical Society that would focus the research specifically on genealogy and use the all the documents at the Norfolk Registry of Deed as a, as a prototype because I think that could be extremely important for people. You know, some people are seasoned genealogists, other people are just rookies. 
but they could go to the registry, go online, and they could really access a lot of information about their families. Sure, that's good. And as I said, uh, the more we get this on, we're seeing more and more people want to use it for historical and genealogical uh, research. On our website, we have a drop down for historical and genealogical and have some, again, trying to be more of a resource information, like some links to some of the, right. the you know, the, 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 the you know, the powers to be the, the, the real uh, people that know uh, genealogy in those groups. So, uh, but point well taken, and, and I, I can only see us uh, getting more and more information uh, out there. But uh, again, thank you uh, for, your, for your kind words about, about it, because as I said, uh, th that's what I called it when we were doing the transcription. I, you know, I, ca I called it the, you know, the History Comes Alive project. And, and, and again, um, uh, very proud that we were the, the you know, uh, to first in Norfolk County to initiate internet land record research so people can, can either come to the registry but do it from the internet. But I'm also, uh, I've got to say a close second, would be in, in when, when, a, when a, a distinguished person like David McCulloch writes you a note, you take note of, you know, take note of it, very proud that we came up with this idea of, and, and not only an idea, in government you can have ideas but then nothing gets done, is actually you know, getting 400, over 450,000 documents transcribed so that people can, can actually uh, you know, enjoy these documents and more importantly learn uh, and enjoy what's in them. Was that done by humans or done by computer? It, you know what, um, I made a point of doing it by humans. There was a group that, you know, they do, you know, this, you know, like the computer. Uh, no, it was, it, it was done uh, by hand. And ironically, a lot of the documents took on form. So even though they were handwritten, you know, almost like now, the, the, you, know, uh, you, know, well, you know, there's forms a lot of times. And it's, you know, the lawyers will have forms and, and you think each document is se separate, but it kind of follows a template. Mm -hmm. Believe it or not, a lot of the documents, because I would talk to the, the, the people that were doing it, uh, they were templates that they actually could follow the templates. Even though it was handwritten, it was as if, you know, someone had a computer form. You know, the name was here, the, yeah, yeah. You know, even though back then they, they didn't have typewriters or they didn't have um, computers that had <coughs> forms that, you know, attorneys you know, pull up and, you know, oh, here's the buyer, here's the seller if it's a purchase and sale or a document. But a lot of the documents took on uh, a template. Um, uh, but we did it by a short, long answer to a short question, uh, we, we did it by hand. And, and if there's a question, because sometimes you'll see it in the type, they might have a question mark. Um, the one I handed out there, there weren't any if I recall. But if, if there was a doubt, you know, they would, you know, you'll see a little question mark. So uh, yeah, it was done by hand. Well, look, you've been great, and uh, it's always great to come back to Foxborough. And again, I, I want to thank you for having me. I really enjoyed it, and uh, th thanks. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>